Hello and welcome to a Talmud Israeli production. Today we'll review the highlights of this week's course of Daf Yomi study, Masachet Yoma, pages 56 through 62, Nunvav through Samach Bet. 56. The Gemara here wants to know why it is that only one stand existed in the Kodesh, in the Heichal, on which to place the bowls containing the blood of the Par Visa'ir, the bull and the goat of Yom Kippur, when it would seem to be more convenient to have two stands given that there were two bowls. But the Gemara explains, Bishimchusha de Kohen Gadol Lavadate, because the Kohen Gadol was tired and potentially distracted, he might confuse which stand was which. And therefore, they only had one, so that it was necessary to pick up the first one before putting down the second one. Vilo Temahachi, if you don't say this, below Ksiva Nami Hainafish Vahizuter. Uh, the Gemara says it was an insufficient reminder to have one of them written par, bull, and one of them written sa'ir, goat. Uh, why was it insufficient? Because the Kohen Gadol might just not pay attention to what's written. In any event, one of the supplies of blood was large and one was fairly small. The par is a lot, the sa'ir is by contrast quite minimal. One is fairly dark, one is uh, not as, uh, uh, as, as dark colored. So there are obvious differences in appearance and in quantity that would make it apparent which one is which, and yet we're still concerned of the possibility of a mix-up. Why? Because he's tired and might make a mistake. Nun Zayin, 57. Tanya, When the Kohen Gadol does the sprinkling of the blood, he does not do so literally on the curtain, but rather in the direction of the curtain. Amar Rabbi so, Rabbi Elazar, the son of Rabbi Yossi, says that he went to Rome. And in the archives of the Roman imperial treasury, he saw the curtain, the parochet of the Beit HaMikdash. And on this curtain, there were drops of blood, indicating that this was the blood, these were the drops of blood of the Yom Kippur Parvisair, which would mean then that contrary to the Tanakama who had said, you don't have to have the blood touch the parochet, the blood in fact did touch the parochet, as a historical matter. Nunchet, 58. Amr lach Rabbi Akiva, Medina b'hau keren de paga b'reisha, b'hau avi b'reisha. So the question is, which corner of the inner altar, the Mizbech HaPenimi, should the Kohen Gadol go to, to begin the applications of the blood on the four corners of the altar, the Arba Karnot HaMizbech, on Yom Kippur. So Rabbi Akiva says, really, he should, he should use the first corner that he encounters, which would have been the southwest corner. Because you're not supposed to pass over an opportunity to do a mitzvah. But why does he, in fact, not do the southwest corner first? The Torah says, he shall go out beyond the altar, which means he's got to go past the entire length of the altar and go to the southeast corner. However, after he goes to the southeast corner, he comes back to the, co- the corner he first encountered, namely the southwest corner, and can- continues along that path, moving leftward as opposed to moving rightward. Nuntet, 59. Tana. So there were two Kohanim Dolim, high priests, who had functioned during the first temple era, who were alive when the second temple was built, was rebuilt. And one says that when it came to the application on the, hor- the horns of the inner altar, that he moved around with his feet, that he physically picked up his body with his feet and moved around to the four corners. However, the other Kohen Gadol says, no, I did not use my raglai in my feet, rather I used my yad, my hand, that he extended his hand from one corner across the altar to the other corner to do the Arba Karnot, the four corners, uh, the four horns of the altar. What's the logic of each one? So the logic of moving your feet is that just as on the outer altar you move your feet, so to on the inner altar you move your feet. The logic of moving only your hand was that the size of the horns of the outer altar is the same as the size of the entire inner altar. And just as at the outer altar at one given corner, you don't move your feet, just your hand, so too on the inner altar, you just move your hand. Samach, 60. If the Kohen Gadol does a scooping up of the incense 
prior to the slaughter of his bull, lo asav lo klum, it doesn't count. It's like he did nothing, meaning he's going to have to go back and rescoop the supply of ketoret. Why is this so? Because the Mishnah tells us, kol masim kipurim, Tamur la say there are all the activities of Yom Kippur which were written on a certain order. If you perform one prior to its fellow, lo asoklum, it is not reckoned as being valid. Samach Aleph, 61. Boimene Ravam Rav Nachman. So Rava asked Rav Nachman, How many goats should you send out to the wilderness, to the yonder, to Azazel? So the response was, Are you going to send out your whole, your whole herd, your whole flock? No. Now the que- meaning you're only going to send one. Only one goat needs to be sent to the tzuk, to the cliff, for Azazel. What's the, th- the, the question in play here? Well, what happens if the blood of the sa'ir were to uh, spill before the conclusion of the uh, applications of blood in the temple, and it was necessary to now bring another sa'ir lashem? Well, if you have to bring another Sayyid Hashem, you have to do a Hagrala. You have to do another lottery, which means there's going to be another Sayyid Azazel. So at the end of the day, there could be multiple, and maybe even more than two if it happens more, uh, a problem happens more than one time, multiple Sayyidim Azazel. Well, how many of those actually have to go to the wilderness? The answer is only one of them. Samachbet, 62. Mete What if one of the goats died? Ad Shalohigril, Mete. And it died before the lottery, meaning after the two goats were purchased, but before the lottery, then all it's needed is to buy another goat and pair it up with the remaining living goat and then do a lottery. However, if the lottery was already conducted, mate, and one of them died, then you have to bring another pair, two new animals, and do a lottery uh, all over again. So depending upon when the death of the one animal occurs, it may, be, it may be possible to just introduce one more animal, or it may be necessary to introduce two more animals and another round of Hagrala uh, lottery. Everyone have a great week.